Hey, this is Matt from 100,000 Mile Tune-Up. Today we're going to be replacing the window motor and regulator on a 2004 Suzuki Forenza. We start by removing the inside door panel. Unscrew the plastic push type retainer here. At the bottom there's three screws. One on the left, one in the middle, and one on the right. The screws are all the same size. Pry out the bezel from the door latch, but be careful and take your time. The plastic breaks very easily. This is from last summer. It's a doorstop that I used to prop up the window. The motor went out, but the customer didn't have the money to replace it, so I propped up the window with these doorstops. This is the other one. I have tape at the top of the window to keep the glass from falling. Now let's pry off the door handle cap. Behind the cap, you'll find two screws that need to be removed. Then pull up on the door panel and it lifts away. On the back side of the panel, you'll see the wires from the window control switch. Push in the tab and pull off the connection. This is the door handle bracket. Remove that now. This is the wire to the side view mirror. We're detaching all these wiring harnesses from the door in order to peel off the moisture barrier. The moisture barrier keeps our insulated door panel dry. It's the white plastic sheet you see covering the door. We'll set this aside in a safe place for later. This is plastic sheeting I stuffed into the door well. It's been there for a year in case the tape came loose and the glass fell. The wire goes from the door switch to the window motor, except the connector is gone. I cut the connector off last summer and added these caps to protect the wire ends. The old connector had a crack in the middle and was pretty much useless, so I cut it off and went to the junkyard for a replacement. Now we can remove the window motor and regulator. Begin by unscrewing these three nuts. Next, remove the four 10 millimeter nuts holding up the regulator.
Now, we still need to separate the glass from the regulator. This can be tricky if the motor is dead, like ours is, and we can't raise or lower the window. Ours is stuck in the down position, which means we lift up on the assembly until we can reach the two screws at the bottom. One here, and one there. Now we can slide the motor and regulator out through the slot. Now, let's quickly verify if our motor is good or not. I'm touching both pins with a 12 volt hot wire and I'm not getting any response. The motor is dead. And yet power was getting to the motor. You can verify this with a multimeter or a power probe. Power should be getting to the motor when you push the up button and when you push the down. If you have power and the motor still isn't budging, it could be a bad relay. You can find the relay for the power windows in the fuse box. It has a four pin design that is interchangeable with several other relay switches. Swap it out with another relay switch and see if your window works. If so, you found the culprit. The passenger side window was stuck in the down position and we lifted it up a few inches to remove the window screws. But what do we do if the window is stuck in the up position? First we want to remove the door panel as we did before. The moisture barrier. We can see the two window screws through this gap in the door. All we need to do to get the window down is to cut the cable right here. Then the glass will slide down easily and we can undo the two screws. After you've removed the window motor and regulator, prop up the window temporarily before putting in the new motor.
The old motor and regulator are exactly the same as the new unit, except there's an extension cord that we're going to have to deal with. Insert your new unit into the slot. Bolt it back in place with the 10 millimeter nuts you saved from your old motor. Torque them down nice and tight. Do the same with the regulator. Use the old hardware and tighten to specification. Now it's time to reattach the window. We still haven't done anything with our pigtail that we got from the junkyard. Insert a butt connector over the bare wire, crimp, and use a lighter or a micro torch to melt the ends. This makes them waterproof. Now I'm connecting the pigtail to the wiring harness where we cut off the bad connector. Make sure they're firmly fastened into place and snap the two connectors together. With the motor and regulator installed, all we have to do now is put back the door panel and moisture barrier and give the new motor a test run. Great, works like a charm. But let's clean that glass because the lady may get mad at us.